did you come? Just Why for pictures? Why are we pictures? protecting our First you Amendment rights? We're allowing you to protest. We're allowing you to But you're not protecting us at all. For Santa Rosa, a week of historic protests culminated here, a dialogue and confrontation between protesters and the city's police chief. I can, I can commit to you that we're going to be reviewing our policies, we're going to be engaging with the public, and we're going to be reporting out and making any revisions that we need to. In the two weeks since the police killing of George Floyd, Sonoma County's largest city has seen young organizers assert themselves. The first large march, Saturday, May 30th, hundreds gathering outside the Sonoma County Sheriff's headquarters demanding change. Since then, the movement has grown, perhaps 10,000 marchers, eight straight days and nights in protest of police brutality. As it has nationwide, the sheer turnout and passion of the demonstrations has tested law enforcement to temper use of force while keeping the peace. Reviews have been mixed. We don't know what's really going to happen here. On Tuesday night, the first with a curfew, a peaceful vigil for Andy Lopez evolved. Joined by others, the demonstration became a march that would see protesters repeatedly confront lines of officers. This night, multiple jurisdictions would make more than 100 arrests, most coming at the intersection of Pacific and Mendocino, where a large group was rounded up for violating the city's new curfew. Santa Rosa Mayor Tom Schwedhelm, the former police chief, knows his background makes him an imperfect messenger. It is a challenge because unfortunately some people see what happens across the nation in other communities and that's not here in Santa Rosa and people would expect a former chief of police to say that but I know for me the standard that I set was you hire the best and the brightest, you train them with the most appropriate up-to-date training, and you hold them accountable. There have been troubling signs, at least three injuries, protesters say, caused by projectiles fired by police. The sheer size and message of the protests have also tested government to respond in a way that acknowledges the pain, anger, and sound arguments of protesters, that force and justice are not doled out fairly. You know what I mean, I think that continuing this march going, this protest going, in a peaceful manner will ultimately get our point conveyed, and I believe, at least with the way that I've had, like, uh, had the city respond to me in the last week, I'd say that it's definitely working. Voices like Joy's now rising in the community, unlike elsewhere in the nation, young people driving the message forward. It put me in a position whereby I questioned my move every day. Am I going in? Am I going out? I questioned whether I was worth it. I questioned so much about my reality. We must fight on until we can eradicate the abuse of power of the ones who take an oath to serve and protect all, but only choose to honor it for some. So where are we? More than two weeks after the killing of George Floyd, Santa Rosa joining other cities and vowing to honestly examine and accelerate change in police culture to implement the eight can't wait changes, including on Tuesday vowing a ban on carotid chokeholds and also commit to a dialogue with a diverse segment of the community. But after a history of assurances, many calling for change remain Seriously. skeptical. And we look at every single use of force that we do. Wow. There were, there were, uh, In Santa Rosa and the nation, trust will take time and real action to achieve. In Santa Rosa, Carl Van Emberg for News of the North Bay.